From Launch Complex 39 at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus three hours and holding. We're now in the final five hours of the countdown for the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-80. The countdown is being controlled from firing room three at the Launch Control Center. And we're on schedule for a liftoff at 2.53 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. This is the 21st flight for Space Shuttle Columbia and the 80th mission of the Space Shuttle program since launches began in April 1981, 15 years ago. There are three objectives of the STS-80 mission to deploy the Orpheus Spas satellite holding a complement of ultraviolet telescopes to study the lifestyle of stars and galaxies, and to deploy the wake shield facility to grow thin substrate films for high-speed electronic chips and advanced electronic components. The mission duration for STS-80 is planned as 15 days, 16 hours, 44 minutes, and Columbia will be in a, be in a 219 statute mile high circular orbit. Assuming on-time launch today, the landing is planned to occur at the Kennedy Space Center on the morning of December 5th at approximately 7.37 a.m. In the astronaut quarters, the five-member flight crew of Columbia are just now being awakened. And approximately a half hour, they will be entering the dining room for breakfast. Afterward, they will have a weather briefing and receive a status on the countdown activity. They will then go to the suit-up room and don their flight suits and at about 11.38 this morning, depart for the 20-minute ride out to launch pad 39B at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. The final inspection team is now at the launch pad, beginning their activities, where they will be for approximately the next two hours. They have several objectives while they're there. They assess the integrity of the thermal insulation on the external tank, they look for any ice or frost formations on the tank and measure temperatures on various parts of the vehicle. Here we see our STS-80 flight crew. Astronaut Story Musgrave down on the end. He'll be in charge of the wake shield facility activity on this mission. There's our flight engineer, Tom Jones. He'll be working the remote manipulator system doing an EBA, and there's our commander, Ken Cockrell. There is mission specialist Tamara Jernigan, lead on our Orpheus spas, and we'll be doing one of the crew spacewalks. And there is pilot Ken Rominger at the end of the tape. And the crew just Getting ready for breakfast. There's the STS-80 traditional cake on the table. And when breakfast is over, they'll head down to suit up and head out for the launch pad, which is just about an hour away at this time. Here in firing room three of the launch control center, all of our activities continue to go smoothly. The final inspection team is on the pad. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding, where we're in the suit-up room and we see our commander, Ken Cockrell, in his suit-up activities today. Ken originally from Austin, Texas. And our pilot. Kent Rominger. Mission specialist Dr. Tammy Jernigan will be one of our EVA astronauts on this mission. And going across the room, there is mission specialist Tom Jones. He'll be our flight engineer on this mission. And he will 
take the lead in operating the remote manipulator system, mechanical arm. And there is Story Musgrave making his sixth flight into space, tying the record along with veteran astronaut John Young. He will be the lead astronaut associated with the Wake Shield facility activities on this flight and will be providing EVA support while Tom Jones and Tammy Jernigan are out in the payload bay. And back now at launch pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center where the final inspection team has reached the mobile launcher platform and is wrapping up their ice inspections and final inspection activities. They've walked down the entire nearly 400 foot structure since they entered the pad about an hour and a half ago. Here we see the STS-80 astronauts leaving the crew quarters en route to the elevator to ride down from the third to the first floor to ride the astronaut van out to pad 39B. And here they come. See our commander Ken Cockrell in the white up white room, being helped by the suit technicians prepare for entry into the crew module. This is shuttle launch control at T minus two hours, thirteen minutes, thirty-seven seconds, and counting. We're in the picture now. We see pilot Kent Rominger waiting to board. And mission specialist Dr. Tammy Jernigan about to be assisted with her launch and entry suit. She will be one of the two astronauts along with Tom Jones that will be doing an EVA on this flight designed to evaluate, evaluate equipment and procedures for building the International Space Station. And thank you. See that's 555 and 556 are complete. Copy. And on the second EVA, the spacewalkers will evaluate EVA tethers. Story Musgrave now going into the crew module. sequence which prepares the engines for main engine start.
engines now being gimbaled as a steering check for Columbia. The beanie cap, the gaseous oxygen vent hood now being retracted. Memory cleared. No unexpected errors. And Columbia OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 slow, and enjoy a weightless Thanksgiving. Rain safety systems arm, 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start, 7, 6, three main engines up and burning, 2, 1, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia on a diversified mission of astronomy and commercial space research. Columbia, roll program. Roger, roll, Columbia. Houston is now controlling. The roll maneuver is complete. Columbia is in a heads down, wings level position, headed to its 190 nautical mile orbit. Twenty-eight seconds into the flight, Columbia's engines are now beginning to throttle down to 67 percent of rated thrust. As the orbiter passes through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Columbia Houston, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Columbia's three liquid fueled engines are now back at full throttle, 104% of rated thrust. Columbia now traveling 1,800 miles per hour, 15 miles in altitude, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 13 miles. All three main engines continuing to perform well. The next event will be the burnout and separation of Columbia's twin solid rocket boosters. Columbia Houston performance nominal. Roger, performance nominal. Two minutes, 18 seconds into the flight, the booster officer has confirmed good separation of the solid rocket boosters and performance on board Columbia has been as expected. All three main engines are continuing to perform at 104% of rated thrust. The three auxiliary power units and fuel cells are also continuing to perform as expected. Columbia now downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at a distance of 55 miles, an altitude of 42 miles, traveling 3,290 miles per hour.